Hey everybody, we're back in the shop again today. Another super hot day out there, but we got the AC running nice and cool in here. Here is a finished L head ready to go. We got it in the crate it was delivered in. Uh, this one's going to leave here this weekend. And <clears throat> I've got myself into another one today. And we're going to do some crack repair today. Uh, I've got a, a good block. Uh, but it had some some cracks and I'm going to take you over to the bench and show you that next but um, There is a long block ready to go in a CJ3A Okay guys uh, This is a very common area on an L head to crack cracks from the cooling passage right to the bolt hole uh, I'm gonna try and get you in there so you can see this side is already fixed Okay, I have a pin and I have a um, solid insert in there. Looks something like that. Okay, now this side, um, when you're doing, when you're going close to a hole, you got to leave just enough um, so you can machine that. You drill it, uh, counter bore it, and tap it. So we have a pin in there. I think you can see it sticking up. The lighting is kind of tough. Um, we're going to grind that down. Uh, not get in. We already decked this. This is nice and flat and smooth. And I got the head over there. We, we machined that as well. So, we want to keep this nice and flat. Now over here, on the number 4 cylinder, I have it outlined in red. It goes around there. I don't know if you can see it, but it dips down in the cylinder, comes back up again. We've got a half a moon there with a pretty good crack in it. Uh, very common place on the back of number four. Uh, I see a lot of cracks there, and um, we're just going to go after it and stitch it up. Uh, trying to get you in there. If you could see that red line, that's where the crack is close to the top we're gonna have to be real careful um, but no reason why this block should be thrown away or anything it's a uh, it's a good block so I'm gonna fix the cracks I'll show you how we do that and then we're gonna bore and hone it and, uh, and then the customer is gonna take it from there but um, like I say this one's done we put one pin we put an insert we have sealer in there and this whole area here now is solid and when the stud goes back in there it'll be sealer on it and um, on all these because these all go into uh, the coolant passages so you got to put sealer on there and uh, the same thing on this guy so we're gonna we're gonna take off we're gonna get that flat and then I'll show you how the insert goes in next okay guys we've got our pin ground down uh, just back from the mill I like to I like to jig these up on the mill when I'm drilling these uh, you don't have to you can do it with a hand drill if you want to it's no big deal uh, we've got a countersink next. And this you could just run in your hand drill. Uh, you're just going to countersink that a little bit. When we countersink it, we're going to pick up a little bit of that pin that we put in. Okay, you run that down until it stops. And we've got our tap that comes with the kit. We're going to lube that up. Just takes a little bit. I'm going to send that down through there. Now as we're cutting, we're just cutting into the pin. I'll show you if you can see it. I don't know how the camera is, but uh, this is what the pin looks like. You got a threaded area, a uh, smooth shoulder and then the head breaks off when it gets to torque and, and I'll show you more about that but right now we're cutting into a little bit of that pin this is going to make this water tight and we're going to go ahead and pressure test this anyway and we'll know if we got any leaks but this is what makes it water tight we're, we're just a little bit into that pin this, this is how you go about fixing a crack that goes into a hole don't put your pin too, too far in the hole, you just wind up cutting most of it away. You just want to be on the edge of the hole. As 
So, we'll get the tat through there. Okay, we've got a special installer tool. I just had that on a tap socket. Your insert's not going to go all the way on there. I'm going to put a little bit of sealant around that counter bore and on the threads, on the threads of the insert. I want to <coughs> seal this insert in there real good. <coughs> okay. Now we're going to send that guy down in there. It's going to fit in that counter bore. Okay, now when this installer tap goes down, I think you can see it going down, it's going to get tight. And what that's going to do, it gets wider and it expands uh, the insert out into the block. So that's getting tough to turn. That's what you want. You want that to, to, to expand and... Uh, that will lock it right into the block. That won't come out now. And you just back it out. Okay, now that is a crack there and a crack there finished up. It went into the bolt hole, but we're not going to have any leaks now because we cut a little bit of that pin out. And a lot of guys ask me, how come I fix this one? Why can't you just leave it? <clears throat> you don't want uh, coolant to get above the threaded area of your stud and come shooting out the head. You don't want this crack to go any further. Uh, if this starts and it's not stable, uh, it could continue a crack into the valve seat and it could continue a crack down towards the distributor. Uh, these pins that we use, they don't expand the metal, they, they grab it, they pull it together. So you got to make sure you have the right pin. We're using CF pins, uh, we're not using L pins or anything like that because they kind of put pressure and expand it. We are using CF pins uh, and, and it grabs the metal and brings it together. See if I can get you zeroed in on that back one. Okay, this is where we're working now. I think you can see that red line now. So we're going to come across. We started at the end of the crack. We're going to come across. We're going to put our last pin in there, down. Then we're going to start coming in on an angle and finish up that area right there. Again, the thread on these CF pins, it's like a hook thread. It takes a special tap to put these in, and it's like a hook thread. So if you had a piece of broken metal and put this in there, uh, it would stay together. It wouldn't push it apart. It would grab it and hold it together. They're really amazing pins. Uh, so make sure you use the right pin for the job. Uh, we don't want to put any expanding pressure on our cracks. Uh, there's places where you could use the L pins. Uh, around the distributor area is a good area for that. But for here, we want to grab that metal and hold it together. So once we get done pinning this, uh, then we can head for the bore and, and get that fixed up. But for right now, we're just going to carefully walk along here with the pins. you got to overlap them halfway. Again, I'll show you this. Uh, we got a tricky area right there to fix. But uh, we'll take our time little by little. We'll get this crack figured out. Okay guys, pin placement is critical when you're going two different planes. So we have one pin here, I put my other second pin here right, not half and half in the hole, but I stayed back from the hole a little bit. We've got our hole drilled, this is our spot facing tool. We want to get part of the shoulder, we want to get part of that shoulder below the surface. About halfway is, is good to go. Okay, so we got our spot facing tool set. Okay, we got a nice recess there. 
Now, this is a special tap. Let me just loop up our tap a little bit. This is a special tap to accept those hook threads on that um, on that on that pin. Okay, don't just use a regular tap. It won't work. You've got to get the tap with the pins. Um, <clears throat> you can get this stuff from Lock and Stitch or you can Google Lock and Stitch. I've been using their products for a long time. Um, only because they work. I mean, there's other ways of doing this. Um, there's guys that'll tell you they've done this with regular bolts or brass bolts and peened them in there. And anything might work, you know. But um, lock and stitch, I've been using it, like I say, for years. And I've never had one that didn't pass a pressure test. If you take your time and you carefully install the pins. Okay, now the next critical thing is the sealer. Uh, this is an anaerobic sealer. Okay, you get it from, from the company again. And uh, this is gonna this is gonna seal those threads. Get a little bit down in there. It's gonna seal those threads, no leaks. Okay. So I just like to start the pin with a nut driver. Get it started in the recess. And you can do this with air tools. You can take a socket on an air tool and, and just quick buzz away and, and zip these off. Uh, I like to feel it when I'm doing when I'm doing it. Uh, okay, so when we got that one in there, and that head will just spin right off like that when you get the right torque. Okay? Again, you could zip, if you got a long row to do, you could do with air tools, zip, zip, zip. Um, I just don't like to do it that way. I like to feel every pin. That way I know um, that I've got a good connection between the pin and the metal. So, we're going to go halfway on this pin, halfway on this pin. So it'll probably be one, uh, it'll probably be five pins right there. Uh, you've got to make sure you overlap. Not too much, you don't want to damage the other pin. But um, we'll, we'll get these flat, and you can put two in, get them flat, and start overlapping. And uh, we'll go ahead and dress those down. And when you get them dressed down and you start peening them with your hammer, do not peen in the center, just on the edges, just all around the edges. Don't smack it down in the center, you'll loosen up the, the hook threads there. So let's dress these down, and uh, and we'll get busy on putting the putting the next row in there. Okay, real careful. We don't want to get into our machine surface, but we want to get the bulk of the material out of there. Okay, now we're going to go around the edges. Not in the center, right around the edges. A nice metal to metal contact. Now they're still up a hair. We'll final dress all of them when they're in there. But we'll go ahead and we'll start our overlap. Okay, guys, we've got two more pins in. You can see I'm halfway on that one. Same thing on that one. I get these guys ground down and I'll have space for one more right in the middle. You gotta do some careful pin planning when you're working on a crack. So um, <clears throat> take your time, lay your pins out, make sure you could get overlap on all of them and you shouldn't have any trouble. So let me get this finished up on the top and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I have this section right here finished. Kind of hard to see it. 
and then the battery on the camera died but uh, I did this section also uh, my last pin going vertically down is right there and then halfway on that I came in on an angle this way so those two pins meet and then as you remember the crack went through here and I put a pin at the end horizontally and then I put another pin vertically and I just I think you can see it there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. there's about eight pins in there uh, just in the bore um, <clears throat> it's a little more difficult because you're on an angle but uh, you have to set the pins a little deeper uh, I set them almost fully in there because I know I'm going to bore this cylinder and um, we want the majority of the pin in there giving it strength so I set them way deep and I think you can see them all in there I've got those ground down smooth but um, that's what the repair is like and we're going to uh, pressure test this block to make sure it holds and I just want to go over some of the things you need to do a job like this there's all the heads of those ones I used in the bore there uh, just some hand tools uh, your anaerobic sealer your tap lube We used a short pin like that. They've got all different thread lengths. You could buy these in a lot of different sizes. And now yeah, you can't see it, but those are the uh, uh, CF pins. And I would use those pins for just about everything. Um, the L series. There's one that's a little bit thicker. Uh, 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 bigger diameter and uh, it's got a thick head on it um, they make those in all different sizes the L series are a little bit cheaper and you got all your associated countersinks and taps and drills uh, here's a countersink that we were using a couple drills there um, special tap got to get your tap with the pins uh, <clears throat> but uh, the, the CF pins the ones I use on this job they're a little bit better because they really uh, grab um, the metal and, and draw it together whereas the L pins have kind of a spreading effect I use those uh, w when the when the casting is very rigid like maybe under the distributor or something uh, they're a little bit cheaper you could use the C pins uh, for everything but like I say they are quite expensive there's the head that's been machined what you're looking at here are our um, pressure testing plates. Uh, here's one for an F head. Here's one for an L head. They're just uh, half inch plates. And we have all the water passages covered, uh, but we leave the valve area and the cylinder area open um, so we can pressure test the block. You got to you got to cover all the holes. And this one uh, blocks off the water pump plate. Um, so we'll bolt those down, we'll put a gasket, bolt those down. Uh, that's how we regulate the pressure going in. And uh, I've done that before in earlier videos, but uh, I'll show it again if anybody's interested. And uh, there are our inserts in there, all finished up. So we're getting there. Uh, we're going to start boring next to see what size pistons we're going to need. Uh, we may be able to get this in 20. We'll check and see how this holds. Uh, I'm pretty confident it's going to be good. If for some reason it's not or we find other leaks or anything like that, we can sleeve it if we need to, but I don't think we're going to have to. Um, so we'll just get busy boring this block next. But uh, just wanted to show you guys quickly, uh, if you have a cracked block, uh, the tools needed to to repair it. Uh, it is kind of expensive getting started, getting all the drills, taps, pins and stuff like that. That's why uh, I do this for, for a lot of blocks. And uh, if you're not going to do more than one block, uh, it, it does it does get kind of expensive to have all the 
all the things that you're going to need and your plates and everything so you can pressure test. But uh, just want to show you how it's done. And uh, if anybody's interested, next time I'll show you how to pressure test it and stuff like that. Otherwise, you've seen me a hundred times bore engines and hone them and stuff like that. But uh, if anybody's interested, uh, just let me know and uh, I can make another video after this one. So, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.